<laughs> There's a coup d'etat on the Zen Kethi homeworld, but nobody's going to miss the autark. Cassidy Yates is hauling a load of deridium ore to Soleus 5, and Cisco tells Jake that one sip of champagne is enough. Hey, everybody, <laughs> and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Ciroc Loft and Jake Cisco. Hey, hello, hello. My name's Ryan yeah, T. Husk. And today we are doing a review of Deep Space Nine's season finale, season three finale, episode 26, Adversary, uh, directed by Alexander Singer, written by Iris Stephen Bear and Robert Hewitt Wolf. My name's Ryan T. Husk. I think I already said that. What were you saying? Uh, what was up with that champagne? Uh, you know, Jake can't really be drinking too much. Not only, he's, you know. I don't think he's 21. <laughs> <laughs> he's not 21 at this time. He's not even close. Um, I went back. Sip. I went back and I, I rewound that like three times because it was so freaking cute. Like you took one little sip, you're like, like this, and then you took another one, and then when he pulls it away, he's like, "That's enough." You went, ah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I savored that little, that little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of honestly. That's one of my favorite moments so far of the three seasons was that ah uh, because you had i swear to god that was a real smile it was i don't know if you remember what happened there but you guys must have had some kind of discussion before or after or maybe you ad-libbed that or maybe the director just gave you whatever it was there was that was a genuine that was Ciroc lofton smiling there not jake cisco do you remember any of that no i don't remember this that's the funny i knew thing, it but but I do know that that is something that I would do outside of the Jake Sisko character. So that's that's a Ciroc moment uh, <laughs> to accentuate that little moment, accentuate my little flavor. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that I added that little a little bit. Right that there. was perfect. You went, and you always kind of like looked like, yep, that's right. <laughs> yeah, you saw it. You guys saw it. I got to drink with the big boys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. It was funny too because the way it was, the way he snatched a cup away from me too. Like I had the champagne glass and I was ready to go for a, you know a big guzzle, and he pulls it away from me, and it's kind of like, well, that's the last I get of that. So let me just ah, savor that. I definitely enjoyed it. Definitely enjoyed that moment, and it was it was good that we get to see uh, Commander Cisco finally getting his captain's status in the beginning of this episode. So now I know it was the end of season three where Commander Cisco becomes, you know, Captain Cisco. You know, there's so many good moments in this episode uh, that we we just have so much to talk about, and I'm really excited about it. That's one of the, the big ones, is Cisco is officially a captain in the final episode of the third season. You can really see that the writers are setting up a big fourth season in this final episode, you know? We're adding the pips, uh, Eddington's getting a bigger role, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Dominion is, is really sinking their fingers, sinking their claws, into the federation uh you know there's cassidy yates gets a nam uh mm -hmm. there's just so much there's so much going on in this episode uh but yeah let's yeah. Start, let's start with captain cisco finally getting his captaincy and i had forgotten that you were the one that added the pip i i had forgotten that i was the one who added the pip and I'm glad, you know, that that was the moment uh, that I was a part of that moment. Um, I also noticed that the is that the dress uniforms that he's wearing with the gold trim around the neckline? Yeah, yeah, really sharp. I always like the dress uniform. I really like it on him. It looked great. I, so you don't wear that. It's kind of like, you know, you don't wear that for your everyday work fit, right? Right. Uh, they have dress uniforms when there's like you know, some kind of official ceremony, a wedding, a promotion. Uh, maybe it's like the dress uniform. Maybe sometimes an admiral is coming in and they want to be presentable for this big, you know, moment. But you mm -hmm. see it every once in a while on Star Trek. It looks really cool. And that's also, I think it's a, it's an actual military thing too, right? I mean, 
we see a lot of the uh, military personnel when they're get, gathered for a special event, they'll have their, you know, their blues on with the gloves and the, and the hat. Uh, but they don't walk around wearing that every single day. So that's the, the dress uniform, I think, is the, the way they describe it, even in today's terms. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I really like the gold. I like the uh, the humility that Cisco shows when he gets this uh, rank promotion. Mm -hmm. He kind of he kind of says, you know, it's, it's just a title. It doesn't change who I am. And I, he kind of addresses that a little bit in the beginning of this. Um, and then he's coy about it too, when he tells, uh, Kira, you know, what is, you know, what does it mean that you have this extra pip? And he's like, well, it means I'm always right. I think that was, uh, <laughs> yeah, she said something like, she said something, does that mean I can't disagree with you anymore? He's like, oh, you can still disagree. It just means I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like that little, you know, little banter right there. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> And I also feel like, you know, this is a little off topic, but I feel like I felt the connection between Dax and Cisco a lot more in this episode. I felt their, the bond that they had way more so than in any other episode so far. Um, in the elevator scene where she was plugging and teasing him about Cassidy. And she was more playful than we've ever seen when yeah. she was doing like this, when she was like, oh, I'll, I'll tell them, you know, she was doing this, this yeah. kind of playful thing. That, that was new. We hadn't seen that before, right? I hadn't seen that level of looseness to her character, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it. I wish, actually, wish see, I could have seen that interaction between the two characters even earlier than this, because it actually it made me feel like they were friends, and they had this playful kind of back and forth where she could tease him about things where other people couldn't tease him. Um, and and the, the tease really came about... Cassidy, which is something he's super sensitive about. You know, I've only had one date. It was like, well, two, make <laughs> technically three. So, has Ka that. have we only seen Cassidy one time so far? Um, I think we've seen Cassidy. Yeah, I think she was mentioned before. Right. So, so so far, she's had one appearance. And two non-appearance mentions already, right. and right. and then one one where she was mentioned but not by name, you know, in Explorers. I mean, that's got to be like a record, man. Where she's like, I only have to show up once, and they can't stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think that's uh, that's fair enough to say. Um, <laughs> and then you see that she goes on these missions where she's gone, kind of like Keiko. They kind of explain her away the way they explain Keiko's character, right? Mm -hmm. She's on a mission to Bajor for a month, or Cassidy's on a freighter haul mission doing delirium or dilithium or something. <laughs> delirium. <laughs> She's doing that delirium. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, what is it? Deridium ore to Soleus Deridium. 5. Okay. So, no, that has nothing to do with uh, delirium or delirious or Eddie Murphy. But, <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's funny because, um, when they were doing the, the pip ceremony for Cisco, uh, they all broke out into a song and that song I thought was, it must've been a clearance issue because they, they broke out into for he's a jolly good fellow. And, um, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> you went, you went, um, but I think, I do think that's a thing that they do. Uh, it's like old school, but I do think they always jump into for he's a jolly good fellow. I think that's, that is uh, tradition, uh, whether it's still tradition 400 years from now, but yeah, that one is very safe from any trademarks or copyrights or anything. I, I think so. I think they, they didn't have to clear that with anybody high up because uh, that's pretty, it, I, I just couldn't believe that they were singing that song. Uh, I, I've never in my experience seen any black person sing that song so or even or say it, the word jolly <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> so just for the record it's not something we use in the black community but um what's another song that you guys don't use in the black community i can't think of them all but there's there's a list <laughs> maybe that mind. one that uh that miles and bashir were singing that jerusalem song <laughs> oh yeah we don't sing that jerusalem song either no that's not on the but for he's a jolly good fellow it's just it's just we never I, I 
I can honestly speak on behalf of all black people that <laughs> we've never sung that song. Uh, so that was an interesting p uh, choice for the moment. Um, obviously it felt good. It was a festive moment. It felt great. I was just waiting for them to say pip, pip, hooray. Is that? That's solid. I give that an That's eight. Solid. I give that an eight. Right, it's not quite as good as the one you said before we started recording. <laughs> oh, where I said pip pips up, O's down. Yeah, that's a mm. that's a rap thing. Mm. Nine point yeah. one. That's a <laughs> nine point one, I think. But yeah, so that was that was my only takeaway. A little criticism of the uh, of the the festivities. The only thing I noticed in that exact celebrating moment was that um, a few people came up to give Cisco a hug. And it just made me think of hugs and how they've gone away so much. So, right, handshakes and hugs and, and actual, yeah, <laughs> just per, personal, personal touching and just you know affection and right. celebration like that. Every so. time I see something like that on on TV, I'm I, I immediately like react like, whoa, what do you do? Oh yeah, that's right. This is that's, that's okay. That's all it was done in the do. 80s or or, <laughs> or in january <laughs> exactly yeah uh but now you look at it and you're like wow two people are getting really close to each other um, <laughs> a little too close. everybody just relax exactly uh, speaking of which we're both wearing american flags on our person today uh those okay. of you just listening in Sirach has his awesome camouflage hat with uh american flag i've got it looks like i've got an american flag but really it's a it's a Guns and Roses shirt. Guns and Roses. It's very, right. it's very different than what, like anybody <laughs> watching just sees it. They're like, oh, that's very festive. He's got a little flag here, but really, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of messy after that first couple inches. Uh, I won't go there. I know. I just, I, as I was saying, I was like, no, <laughs> come back, words, come <laughs> back. <laughs> but I will say that um, you know when, when I did the painting of with Avery. The thing that was the theme behind the painting or the or behind the uh, artwork was uh, Captain America, and I often say this, and I should it bears repeating that you know Avery Brooks in, and Captain Cisco, the first American captain on Star Trek, um, and so that I always call him. I had forgotten that. Yeah, yeah, he's the first American captain, right. and so. So in my in my humble opinion, Captain Cisco is Captain America. Um, he's America's uh, captain. He's America's captain. He's the first delegate we sent into the Star Trek series franchise, and um, <laughs> and so yeah, you know, and yeah. and what's funny about that is Voyager's captain was also going to be Canadian for the first couple of weeks. They shot with a Canadian actress that Kate Mulgrew ended up replacing Elizabeth. Bujold, I think, something Bujold, a uh, Canadian lady. And so it would have been Canada 2, USA 1. What the heck? <laughs> Canada's yep. out there giving us the knockout blow, you know? Well, as we, as we have uh, learned from our discussions with Ira and, and, and the fellows up uh, in the high brass, mm. um, Sadig El Fadil, or AKA Alexander Sadig, was originally cast to be. Uh, right. Captain Cisco, or was in consideration to be uh, Captain Cisco, which means they they wouldn't have even had an American captain. Even it would have been like two Brits and two Canadians duking it yeah. out for supremacy, and USA would have been like, "What about us?" And they're like, "You just keep paying us, <laughs> okay? You just wait till Enterprise, all right? You'll get yeah. your turn. You'll get the uh -huh. most corn-fed <laughs> American dude ever for your captain." <laughs> exactly. But so, you know, Avery represented uh, U the good old US of A, and that's why I put him on the backdrop of the, the red, white, and blue on the piece of art that I uh, designed for him. Oh, that's cool. Man. So uh, there are a lot of big changes uh, that happen throughout Deep Space Nine, I think, that really kind of change the tenor and the image of it. The first one being when they add the, the Defiant. They add the Defiant. There's a slightly different, you know, hue to the to the show now. Now it's a little different. Then uh, Cisco gradually goes from, you know, he gets his goatee, which we saw. He becomes a captain. Then he shaves his head. 
then later on wharf comes in you know there are a few you know five six seven steps that gradually change it also nog going into the federation uh you know joining starfleet i should say so there are a lot of these minor changes and today is is one of the bigger ones you know because cisco really was a captain like the way he acted was a captain and as we've heard the writers say eventually they just couldn't like deny it anymore for lack of a better word eventually they just have to say okay look the part was meant for a commander but the actor is getting big the story is getting big he's got to be a captain at some point yeah and i would also um look at it through the lens of of, of what was happening at the time so they start off with captain kirk they go on to Captain Picard. Then they go to a commander. And maybe that was okay. And maybe they, intention, their intention was to have him you know, work his way up to become a captain eventually, as they, ha as they did. Um, but that argument kind of loses its, its weight when Voyager gets introduced in this season, I believe. Was it season three that Voyager begins, right? right? That's right. Uh, the second half. So right now they're probably around like episode, you know, 10 of Voyager or something like that. Right. So now they just brought in Captain, uh, you know, Captain Janeway. Kate Mulgrew, Captain Janeway. And so they have three captains and a commander. And, you know, the, the rumor at the time, I remember these rumors, was, uh, you know, why was he a commander? Why wasn't he made a captain earlier on? Was that, a, was that an act of some kind of racial bias? Was that something that they were doing to kind of, because he's black, he's not, he's not, he doesn't get the qualifications. So there was a kind of rumorations about uh, the, the association between him being black and him not being a captain yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could tell you in their defense um, that any time, I mean, there's a difference between a captain of a ship and the person in charge of a space station. And the person in charge of a space station has never been a captain that I've ever seen in Star Trek. They're always a lieutenant, a lieutenant commander, or a commander. That's just always how it's been. So I, I think that from the very beginning, what, before they cast it, they were like, this is a commander. And I don't even think they planned on having that person move up to captain. I just think it was always going to be a commander. And that's just a guess on my part. But like I said, like, there's never been a commander of a space station that was this important with the Dominion and with the Romulans and with the Klingons and all these things to where you needed a big shit in there. You needed a, a big guy. You know, it's, it's no longer just a commander's job or a lieutenant's job. Plus Avery, like they said, he was too big and powerful and seasoned to be a commander. Plus, as you're saying, regardless of their intention, it's bad optics. It's bad optics to say white captain, white captain, black commander, white captain. <laughs> it's just right. it's like, okay, at some point you have to just be like, okay, here were our intentions, but let's let's adjust to what just do what we should do, which is pretty obvious. I'm sure everybody agreed with the move, right? Yeah. Um, I, there was no argument about making him, you know, a captain. And I also think that it coincided with some of the elements that you mentioned. Obviously, the, the spaceship dynamic, which is a stationary uh, station. So that's, you know, that may be one consideration. The other thing I think is, is really good was um, we got to see him on the bridge of the Defiant in this episode as the captain. Yes. And that's where... Um, you know, little bells and whistles go off in my head when I'm watching that scene and I'm seeing him, you know, with Kira at the, at the number one, at the helms, and everybody's kind of manning their stations. That's when it kind of felt like, oh, wow, this is, this is the traditional Star Trek all over again. So I actually got a real, for the first time uh, watching this show, I actually felt for the first time, oh, this is like the traditional Star Trek moment, the next generation mm. moment. Yeah, the the original series moment. So I actually felt that when when they were all at the on the bridge together. It also makes Deep Space Nine be on such a bigger scale than any of the other series still to to date. Um, 
because they have this stationary station. I guess that's probably why it's called a station. And in, in front of the most important, like basically in the middle of the most important, you know, spot or situation in the quadrant, uh, mm -hmm. this, this is it. This is like the Fort Knox or the, you know, whatever you want to call it. This is, this is the big thing. The Alamo, I don't even know stuff about wars. And yeah, uh, uh, because it's a wormhole, I would almost call it like the first transcontinental highway something like a route 66 mm -hmm. or the railroads that there we go one side or the other. right but then on top of that they have that and now they have a ship that can go off into the wormhole into a different quadrant completely so they have you know they have the battle at home they can go into a different quadrant and they have a ship that can go anywhere i mean like that's what made deep space nine one of the things that made it so awesome was that now it's it spans so much. It's not just one ship exploring or one station sitting there for merchants to show up and have little hijinks, but it was huge now. Yeah, the mobility is, 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 is necessary, especially when you're going to be doing the exploring, going to be confronting other civilizations like the, uh, the Zenkati. Zenkati. Uh, Zenkati. Although Saint Odo Kefi. pronounces it with the, the actual TZ, which is probably the correct pronunciation. He calls it the Zen Kethi. Well, most people are just like, dude, that's, that's ridiculous. I'm just going to call it the Zen Kethi, and that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the differences in uh, pronunciations throughout watching it. Some, each person <laughs> yeah. way of doing it. Um, but, you know, if you're going to be exploring, if you're going to try to um, man up against the Jemadar and um, the founders and all these people that you're going to eventually be going heads up with you're going to need the firepower which the defiant is obviously equipped with some really good firepower for, for such a small ship uh spaceship but um you're going to need the mobility and i think that's um that's something that they they're covering all those bases in this particular episode really mm -hmm. well so uh we've got to go to our break in just a minute but before we do Let's uh, give a quick shout out to our associate producer, Miss Yvette Blackman, uh, way out in the East Coast. She's been so great to us for almost the duration of this uh, series. And uh, during the, the live chats of the video premieres, she's our muscle. She's out there being like, you guys better give this video a like and making sure that everybody <laughs> gives the video a like. And there's like zero dislikes because Yvette's out there cracking skulls <laughs> for us and we love her and she's really cool um yeah. and i know sarah you you talk with her uh here and there as well she's been great to us she's been wonderful um she's on the ball she's you know such a great person and um i really I lo love talking with her love sharing ideas with her mm -hmm. and love the fact that she's on our team supporting us she's she's wonderful and uh she was also there with the sci-fi sisters in the uh the uh, uh after party of virtual trekcon we'll talk about that a, a different time but uh you just basically the rule is you don't say no to a vet that's the rule just don't say no <laughs> if she says like the video you like the video if she says come to a zoom chat you come to the zoom chat period yeah she's got that uh she's got that presence like your mom has when your mom tells you to clean up your room you kind of got to do it. It's not really a, a choice. It's, it's, right. it's an order. But then once you do it, she's got like the best smile too. Then she's so sweet. Uh, she's like, right. see how good it, it is when you do what I tell you to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's for your own good. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so shout out to Yvette Blackman. We love her. She's awesome. And uh, we are going to take this super quick break and come right back on the seventh rule. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Seventh Rule with Ciroc Lofton. We are hello, hello. We're doing our review of The Adversary. Sorry, just Adversary. Episode 26 of Season 3, directed by Alexander Singer. This is it. If you guys haven't jumped on the train yet, now is the time to jump on the train, because this is the final episode of the third season. Everything's going to get crazy. Also, uh, please be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash the seventh rule. Please subscribe to this channel, like every video, or we're just going to have to tell a vet. 
and uh, <laughs> be sure to comment in the description or in the comments below. That also helps out with the YouTube and search engine optimization algorithms. Thank you. And let's talk more about this episode because there's so much to talk about. I also want to talk a little bit about um, Michael, Michael Eddington, right? Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to get your take on him. It seems like they introduced him at the beginning of this season. Then they kind of forgot about him a little bit. Now he kind of pops in a little bit more. He's had two or three episodes now where he's kind of more of a major player. Do you have any thoughts on him? Well, when I, when I first saw him so prominently featured in this episode, like, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in the picture behind you, he's, he's like one of the upfront, forefront characters. So mm -hmm. um, it made me think, okay, well, this guy's going to die this episode because he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he's had it coming. <laughs> he's got it coming because he's, he's been in the background for all this time, and now all of a sudden he's getting this kind of um, foreground, you know, appearance in this episode. So I thought to myself... Um, he's either the key to this episode. He's the, he's the change link. He's going to be the problem. He's going to be the, the center of the storyline or he's going to die. So I, th those were the things revolving around my head when I watched him in this, as soon as I saw him pop up and he was being prominently featured, I said, okay, either this guy's going to die Smart. somehow, or He's going to be the, the, the key to the storyline. You know, mm -hmm. the whole thing hinges around him and, and solving things or being the, the culprit. I, I still you. suspect that he's not. I still, you know, even after watching this episode, I still don't. I still suspect he's has a nefarious allegiance mm. to something else other than Starfleet. Interesting. You're like, you're like, all right, Star Trek, you keep pushing this guy. What's your game yeah. here? What's. What yeah. the, he's not one of us. He's not one of the cool kids. Why are you? What's what's? Is he gonna die? Yeah. Is he gonna kill someone? What what's the point here? And you're right that like he does always seem to either be in direct conflict with the captain, as we saw previously, or in minor conflict. You know, like where the where Captain Cisco says like. Uh, well, there was a really good exchange when he's talking about like the ambassador, how he's saying, you know, what would you do if this happens? And right. Eddington says, well, I'll, I'll escort the ambassador, whatever. And Cisco's, Cisco doesn't trust him just like you don't because he tests him. He says, well, the ambassador won't like it. And Eddington says, I won't let that bother me. And so Cisco's satiated by that or whatever it is. He's like, okay, good. Just want to make sure because last time an ambassador or an admiral or something told him something, he took a dump on Cisco's head about it and was like, oh, sorry, you know? And so Cisco's mm -hmm. like, whose side are you on, dude? Yeah. And the other thing that kind of gave that, that kind of suspicious nature of what he's up to, he mentioned the promotion of Cisco. He said, hey, you're the captain now. Everybody wants to be the captain, you know? Right. Uh, not everybody wants to be, you know, it's like we don't, we're not in this to be the admiral and we're not in this to be the commander. We're in this to be the captain so we can sit in that chair. And he mentioned sitting in that, I, I think it was, I think he mentioned that. Right. Um, and, uh, and Cisco said, and, but then he said he ended up going gold. He said, well, nobody ever gets to sit in that chair in the gold uniform because that's security or operations right. or engineering, but in this case, security. Uh, and Cisco says, well, you could always switch to command. And Eddington seems like he gives it a thought. He says, uh, then who would protect the ambassador? <laughs> Which is a good line. Yeah, that's funny. Which was a good line. It was a good comeback. And I think that's, what's, that's what you know, was able to please Captain Sisko in that moment. He's like, all right, that's a good answer. <laughs> um, but I still, I'm, still, I'm still suspicious of him for some reason. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe he didn't hang out and eat enough with me at the craft service table in between shots. <laughs> <laughs> but there's something about this Eddington guy that I just can't put my finger on. There's something double agent about him. There's something I love it. about it. I love activity. it. Spoken like a true Cisco. You're watching him. Like, I'm I don't know what my it, eye I'm, on this guy. I'm watching him. Oh, yeah, I'm watching him closely. Something <laughs> something doesn't add up. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I thought it was funny though. This is a complete uh, just you know a side note. 
But every time we're in the conduits, right? And O'Brien's in the conduits fixing some panel and Bashir was in the conduits this episode, fix, you know, doing his little thing. I just thought to myself, why would they make the conduit so damn small that you have to crawl through there? <laughs> it's spacing, with all, I guess. With all this technology and you have the vastness of space, um, you would think that you would say, oh, yeah, let's make the conduit a little bit more accessible than having to crawl through it and down this long... Right, you know, and the, not just that, but, okay, let's say, for example, let's say that there's just not a lot of space on the ship and they're like, look, we can't make something big for something that's hardly ever used, right? But then yeah. why not put a mat at the bottom, right? Why does it have to be great? <laughs> like, why are they always yeah. scraping up yeah. their knees the whole time? It's like, dude, like at least have some yeah. humanity. Don't some torture carpet? your engineers. <laughs> <laughs> Something, you know. Some linoleum, or, or, for God's sake. Something. <laughs> Let yeah, them slide some- across. Yeah, or, or maybe having designed like something you roll on your back with, like a mechanic goes under the car. He has That's a, a good one, yeah. Little roller thing, you know. Um, some kind of technology that allows you to go through that section with more ease than just crawling through it on your hands and knees like a baby. That's like a as baby. I was watching. I'm watching that. I'm thinking, gosh, uh, O'Brien must really hate being in those conduits when they're filming. It must be, you know, a pain, a pain to sit in there for hours at a time while they're doing close-ups and this and that. Especially, usually, those conduits have special effects scenes where fire is happening or smoke is, you know, something's blowing up. So you're, right. you're in that small space <clears throat> with the heat of the fire or with the smoke. And that's, I'm sure that's not the best place to be filming for O'Brien. But You know, there's only one person so far that I can remember in the history of Star Trek that doesn't mind being in those conduits in fact in fact actually likes it and that person is give three seconds for the fans to guess who's who's that person that likes being in the conduits ensign rutherford of lower decks (laughs) he's the only one that's ever expressed excitement about being in there yeah yeah and i've i've been in the conduits myself earlier in in one of these episodes where i i rescued o'brien actually i think where they where he said there was spiders in there or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think my dad told me to stay back, just wait here. And then I saw that O'Brien was hurt, so I crawled in That's and right. rescued yeah. him. And he said, Keep keep that between us, you know. So I've I've had my own experience in those little uh tiny spaces and, and as a six six foot plus guy, it's not fun to be down in there. But just a little LOL moment for me, the the, the crawl space of the conduits. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've got a lot of big moments in this episode too, like things that actually change the direction of the series. One is <clears throat> that for the first time ever now, a changeling has harmed another. And they made sure to put that in earlier in the episode that says no changeling has ever harmed another. They said that before and they said it again in this episode. And what happens, they start fighting each other. Now, I don't know if what that changeling was doing to Odo is considered harming him, but remember, the other changeling did attack him, putting his hand in his pancreas or whatever. And so then Odo more than harmed him, but actually turned him into black sand, like a black sand beach or something. Mm -hmm. And now Odo's life is forever changed because of that because he's harmed another. And the changeling's reputation of never harming a, another, they can no, no longer claim that, you know? Because they that's a little mantle of pride right there for them. Yeah, it's a, it's, it doesn't mean much to me because they're willing to hurt other people. The changelings hurt, they hurt the Jemadar, they hurt right. uh, humans, they hurt other people. Just because they don't hurt each other, there's no real high ground in that if you're hurting other people. So if the changeling were a group of people that have never hurt anybody, then it would be... Then we can talk. (laughs) Then we can talk. Then we can talk and then we'd see, well, that means a lot. But, you know, you you don't hurt anybody uh, outside of your own kind. That's not really a benevolent, uh, you know, species that's that's out for good. So It almost seems like the opposite. It seems like the opposite, right? Mm -hmm. It's, It's kind of that... 
uh, master race, you know, uh, Nazi type um, ideology that, yeah. you know. Well, we don't, we don't hurt, we don't hurt our own. Why, right. Why would we hurt our own? We can harm right. everything else, but we would <laughs> never hurt our own. Oh, you're so magnanimous. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Yeah. What a so, hero. <laughs> yeah. So there's real, no, there really isn't any honor in that, but, but there is something that defines who you are. So it, it does make him, you know, uh, Odo essentially the first change link to do that. So, you know, it, it, it means something. Yeah, right. It, it means something to them. And that's to the them. point is that it changes his life and it changes the, the changelings, the founders. And so now they've taken a different trajectory. You know, there's something, there's something very different in the way the founders will view themselves, will view him, will view the Federation. Uh, it's a pretty big moment. Yeah, it's a big moment. I mean, for Odo, I think it's a big moment. I think really it's it's about Odo, you know, struggling with his own identity. He doesn't know his people that well. He doesn't know much about himself. Um, so, uh, and then the other thing is, uh, when the guy put his arm inside of his pancreas or whatever, um, they didn't ex- they didn't really explain how that was hurting him. Yeah, or- I didn't get it either. Yeah, or how that was, like that. That would be totally new to Odo, right? To have like this other. Maybe he thing. loved it. Maybe he's like, oh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> right. So like, there was no real explanation onto like how that affected him, how that may have changed his like perception of of just his own uh, uh, mortality. You know, yeah, it Odo, seemed, yeah. right? It, it seemed like like it was stunning him or something. It was neutralizing him in some way. But yeah, it's very confusing because, I mean, if they're both made of goo, then wouldn't the impact be the same from one person to the other? It's, you know, it's not like a knife, which is the knife will harm a human, but it won't harm the person wielding it because he's holding the blunt edge or whatever. But this is just two buckets of goo interacting, which... Who knows? It seems like if we know anything about changelings, uh, they would enjoy that. Yeah, I don't know that it would. That was a bad thing. And um, <laughs> the other thing that I wondered was, how do you, when he when he reemerges and takes his hand out of him, you know, how does he not accidentally what? take a piece out of, <laughs> take a piece of Odo out of him too? You know, like, hey, wait, wait, wait. You, you know, <laughs> yeah. Odo's like, wait, give me that that part. No, no, no. This one's mine. This is me. Okay, but. Yeah. Oh, see, I remember clearly this part's me over here, and they're just kind of like yeah. fussing. Where's my belly button? You took my belly button. Well, now I have two. <laughs> Something like that would have been, you know, I mean, I, it was just going through my head, like, what is it really going, you know, what's really going on in that moment when they're exchanging these, uh, this moment. But um, we got a sighting of your, your Boleans, and now we know that Boleans bleed blue. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's a good one. Which give us, which give us a whole new na- uh, meaning to blue blood. <laughs> All right, <laughs> give me another. All right, here we, here we go. <laughs> uh, there's another one that I'm not going to touch. There, another blue yeah, please joke. Don't. Um, please don't touch those. But <laughs> don't touch those. <laughs> but yeah, I was really excited that there was a bully in there, and I remember thinking about you because I'm like, I bet you Ciroc's going to catch that and be like, Hey, we get. And he got lines. It wasn't just like some dude in the background to like look cool. Um, you know, the final episode of the season might have a higher budget, so they're like, "All right, we can we can pay an actor to have a few lines." And he had a good a good role. It wasn't just a couple lines here or there. He was partnered with Kira, um, which was a good partnering there. And uh, it was just good to see, you know, because Bolians are are supposedly a very competitive race. Uh, if I remember correctly with what I read way back in the day, they compete with each other and they have this sport or something, if I remember right, where they like hold each other underwater and do really weird things to each other uh, to establish like dominance. And, you know, they're super competitive, but don't quote me on that because that's, that's a long time ago. I read that, but that's kind of their situation. So it was nice to see one, you know, it wasn't exactly competitive, 
but he certainly wasn't shy about talking to a superior officer. Yeah, he stood up to Kara really mm-hmm. forcefully, actually. And um, uh, he said, go ahead, after you, Major, you know. Yeah. Uh, she's like, why, you don't trust me? He's like, no, I no, don't. No, I don't. And she's like, I don't blame you. <laughs> and, and, and I actually liked that moment between the yeah. two. It was actually a really good moment. Um, but then at the same time, I didn't suspect the Bolian of being the change link or of being some kind of nefarious character. The way I do Eddington, which is crazy. Um, Eddington, just something about him just says like he's up to something, you know, there's some secret plan. <laughs> I <back>. love it. <laughs> like he's a Section 31 guy or something. Uh, everybody <clears throat> at home real quick. Uh, by the way, Sirach has not seen this series before. That's why it's so fun to hear his guesses and his thoughts on Eddington. So join us in this uh, in this journey as we go through the life and trials of Michael Eddington on Deep State Nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, there was that one scene where uh, Dr. Bashir is, is doing the testing on everybody to see who has the, right. that was the cool. radiation on their... And it was so obvious when he switched the vials. I don't, I don't know if you, if you paid attention to that moment, but when he was doing the, the vials and he was testing everybody, he had the extra two vials in his hand and you could see him clearly switching the vials and saying, ah, oh, look, I found it. <laughs> He's like, what's this over here? Switch. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this is like the worst magic trick ever. Nobody paid attention to the fact that it was such an obvious switch over. Um, he's like, and what guess, was the card you were thinking? Ace of spades, queen of hearts. <laughs> great. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So it was, uh, <clears throat> it wasn't the best sell for me. Um, but I did like the pass codes to the self-destruct sequence. Mm. Uh, Cisco alpha one alpha. And then, uh, Kira. That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good pass code there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Kira beta to beta. I just thought that was pretty good. I, I don't know why I was I was so taken aback by it, but I just like their I like hearing people's passcodes in movies, you know. I see you got you got your stray cat coming by to say hello. <laughs> uh, how can you tell? Because that's the only thing that can uh, take you away from, from your duties in life. That's the only thing that makes me go. <gasps> Yeah, she's yes. out there. She knows. I'll feed her in a few when we're done here. She can wait. Michael Eddington is more pressing, and Bolians <laughs> and Captaincy and Founders. She knows. She only likes to come when she knows there's like there's some real stuff being discussed here. She's yeah, putting it on she purpose. Knows. It's a it's a dominance thing. Don't don't fall for it. Cats are like that. <laughs> uh, but speaking of important things, and we're we're already running low on time here, but. The the founder, the changeling, whispers into Odo's ear, and we find out at the very end what it is. He says, you're too late. We're everywhere. And this is how we end the third season, meaning season four is about to get crazy. The changelings have infiltrated the Federation, or at least Starfleet, or the Defiant, or Deep Space Nine. We don't really know. But we see what one can do and that's a scary thought yeah it is a scary thought but it also is a good thought because i i know that it's about to kick into high gear and right. we're about to get a lot of action so i'm i'm excited about that the action that we're we're headed towards um but the you know the dominion have been looming now for a while they've done a really extensive like set up and build up for these guys, right? They, we've met them before. We've had conversations. Uh, we saw the swimming pool of, of changelings and things that they, they all swim in. The swimming pool. The kiddie pool. It wasn't very deep either. It wasn't very deep, but we've seen pool. all. Yeah, so we've seen all of these things and, you know, they've been set up and the Vorta, you know, and we, we've, he- we've heard about all of these different elements, but uh, I'm excited to get into the nitty gritty and get into the meat of this, of, you know, what's about to happen, which is obviously they're looking to start the 
major kind of intergalactic battle between everybody. Uh, the idea of this episode was to, um, you know, have the have the defiant basically start a war by attacking the Zenkati. The Zenkati. Right. Cut it, right <laughs> yeah. i gotta read that every time i know i know <laughs> um but we know that that war is inevitable either way so uh whether whether it's going to be the defiant that starts it or not by this change link revealing that you know they're everywhere and it's too late we know that it's only a matter of time before stuff really starts to hit the fan and i'm excited to see how that's going to go yeah, um, I was just trying to think of a way to get you to say Zen Kathy again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we, Zen Kathy, yeah. We never actually see them. We hear them in a bunch of episodes. They talk about them a lot. They always kind of pop up in things, but we've never actually seen them. We've seen them in Star Trek Online, which is not necessarily official canon Star Trek, but it's close enough to the point, as we know, Al Rivera has told us that they talk with CBS and they kind of compare thoughts and notes. So Star Trek does have the right to do whatever they want to make the, them look however they want and not have to base it on what Star Trek Online did. But uh, it could very well look just like that because they could have just said, well, this is how we always picture them or something like that. It's a really interesting relationship there. So I, I did look them up and they're weird. I can't really make out what's going on in their face it's just a big mess and they've got four arms and which is probably why we've never seen them because that's an expensive mm -hmm. thing to make you know yeah, I mean? yeah 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 so. <laughs> well you know I, I don't know if we'll ever see them but i don't really think they matter at this point because they're just nope. a pawn in this overall chess game that's that's being played <laughs> Uh, where the Federation is the prize, right? To get the Federation on the hook and involved in this thing is, is really the, the main goal. Um, but I did want to make a couple of quick side notes before we close out because I know we're short on time. Number one is the, uh, the, the guy that was, um, who was assigned to go with Cisco when everybody was paired up because Cisco wanted everybody to have a, a teammate with them so that there was no confusion about who was the change link or not. Right. Uh, um, the guy who was paired up with Cisco was our stunt coordinator, Dennis Matalone. Really? And we've seen him several times playing different aliens. He might, he actually might've played more I didn't more realize character. that was the same guy, the dude with the bandana on his leg, huh? Right. I didn't right. even realize that bandana. was him. Yeah, and he was the one who gets killed by the change link uh, when he's with Cisco in that little coming down the, the ladder. So just a shout out to Dennis Madalone, who probably has played now more characters than, I don't know, maybe anybody, <laughs> if you really, if you think uh, we'll about see. it. We'll see. Uh, he's got he's to be up there with Jeffrey Combs and those guys. Because, mm, mm -hmm. I mean, not, not speaking roles, but. Just uh, different roles, yeah, different characters. Different, different roles, things, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, um, so we only have a couple minutes left, but I wanted to introduce something very quickly at the very end. Yeah. That I'm going to call Ryan's nitpick of the day. And I got to put on my Captain Picard tie okay. for the nitpick. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. Who's watching the station when Odo and Kira and Bashir and mm -hmm. Cisco and O'Brien and Dax and everybody is on the Defiant. Who's watching the station? They need to leave Odo and Kira behind. And while I'm at it, why are Odo and Eddington paired together when they're the two security guys? You got to have one with the other. That was uh, Ryan's nitpick of the day. Very good. <laughs> so now, uh, and now, <laughs> thank you. Now, and before, now back to our red release schedule yeah, program. And now before we close it out uh, with your prediction of the IMDb score, we did forget the uh, trivioids that didn't make the cutting room floor. There's a coup d'etat on the Zenkethi homeworld. We already got that one. Jake loves champagne. Cassidy Yates is hauling a load of deridium. We got that. Cisco and Cassidy are going to the Hollow Suite to watch the seventh game of the 1964 World Series. That was a really cool one. 
Chief O'Brien is hearing things in the Defiant. The Defiant hears a distress call from Barissa Prime, and the USS Ulysses is studying protoplanetary masses in the Hellespont Nebula. So this is it. Jake Sisko guesses the IMDb rating. Um, well, first off, <clears throat> shout out to the Hellespont Nebula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where E40 likes to visit on his vacations because there's hella spot over there. Nice. I was going to make a hella joke, but yours is better than what I would have done. <laughs> and uh, my guess on this one is um, I would say this was about an eight, mm -hmm. like just an 8.0. I'd actually say 7.8 .8 to eight and go on the lower side of, the, of that number than the higher. But that's my that's my guess. Survey says eight point three. Oh, very close. Oh. Very good. Uh, eight point three. I think it got a, some pretty good marks for being like for for altering the trajectory of the show and for being the season finale. Uh, and the, cap the captain. Mm -hmm. A lot of big moments. Next, yeah. yeah, big moments in this one. But we'll okay, talk about it. We'll talk about it in the free for all with some very special associate producers. And uh, we'll be right back on the seventh rule. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the seventh rule. This is the free for all with Commander John Tuferella. We also have Commander Homer Frizzell. We have Deputy Commandant Rex A. Wood. We have Melissa Longo, Dr. Muhammad Noor, Changeling TJ. And Dr. Sue Gruner, Sirach Lofton, as always, as usual, and Dr. God, we all got a lot of doctors. Dr. <laughs> Anne Marie Siegel. How's everybody doing? Great. All right. Great. Do doctor, 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 <laughs> doctor, <laughs> doctor. <laughs> captain, <laughs> captain, commander, commander, captain. <laughs> right. Uh, Cisco becomes a captain in this episode. Anybody have any thoughts on that? That was a, a big moment, right? About time or what? Like, made that part about of About time. time. Yeah. I like the intro scene where it wasn't obvious what was happening. Like, wait, what? And then, oh, he's getting promoted. That was cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yay. And Jake gets... Yeah, because they kind of... <laughs> yeah, right? They kind of teased us like, this is my last log as a commander. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty nice. Sipping on gin and juice. Oh, that's Lay it. Back. This is yeah, a this is go. a good question There's no here. Money in the future. Oh wait, platinum. <laughs> money, yeah, with my latinum on my mind and my mind on my latinum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so here's a good question. Oh, well, before we get to the question, guys, do any of you have any thoughts on this episode? Um, changelings know every little detail of what happens on. Only that it's been a long time since I've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't get it. Angela and TJ, do you know every detail of what happens on Quark's yeah. Hollow Suites, even if you're not there? Like, that was insane. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, that I was do. unexplained. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, Chief O'Brien and... had to eat some lamb stew before he went kayaking. Oh, you did know? Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. He's yeah. a changeling. Only the real, only the real <laughs> Odo knew about the pork. But then he was like, anybody could know that. But I was like, whoa, this changed like the lamp hardcore studying. Yeah, that's a lot of cramming. <laughs> that was so yeah. weird. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Brian's story is um. boring. <laughs> so do you get the memories when you change into something? Is, that's is, the thing. Is that, like, that, that happens later with Bashir, too, yeah. where they say, where Bashir is a changeling Bashir the whole time. Uh, Anne-Marie, I'm sorry. Oh, whoops, uh, whoops. Sorry, never mind. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert spoiler alert 25 years spoiler alert <laughs> 25 years <laughs> whatever <laughs> that's funny <laughs> but do you, you do get the memories or you don't i don't know i'm not clear about that but what i hate about it because i thought like, that was that weird too i think they just have a very well developed intelligence network i think I so too because they be. are everywhere they yeah. can be anywhere they could be a rock a chair so they yep. could be it the changely could have been in the hollow suite with o'brien and odo and new yeah. it could have been a a, a fake could have been rock. the kayak 
Pero bueno, <risa> <risa> When you're on a space station with a changeling, do you worry that he's in the room for everything? That he could just be there? Should. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, Quark does because that's what Odo like does to him. Yeah. He could be anywhere. He could be the toilet. Yeah. Could be. Oh. <laughs> Can you split and be in two places? Can you be right. like half of Odo in one place and half of Odo somewhere else? Oh, Ryan, yeah, you're, you're killing me. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Get toilet to be though. Seriously, <laughs> I'm gonna be the toilet. <laughs> That's what's happening in the bathroom. That's a shitty choice. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Here we go. Love the change. I'd be like, I'll be the sink or something like that, but I'm not being the toilet. And we know they can change size and density right because he's been a rat before he could be a pencil Amazing actor a rat he could be yeah. a, that's right he could be a mountain <laughs> he can be a i mean you could you, you could be like a a fly or something really that's what small I said. And, 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 <laughs> and, then why, and nobody could even <laughs> nobody would even be able to see it catching what you're pitching yeah. dr groomer yeah. really heavy fly <laughs> Like they you know don't really in. change density, but change mass. But if yeah. it's just a little piece of him, maybe that can go. Well, yeah, but, but then the blood, blood no, theory would work. Because, right. Oh, that's true. That's right. Because they're all liquid. You're right. That's a good point. Yeah, good point. It's really neat that they can be scanned and they're that object, too. But then okay. here's the other that question. That is that cool. They're rock, they're rock, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a little weird, too. That The science that's there is a little cool. tough yeah. to stomach. But here's the other question. If they're... If they're losing a piece of themselves, like some blood that changes into whatever, aren't they going to get that much smaller? <laughs> yeah, their mass and then is that less. much smaller, yeah, and then yeah. that much smaller. Okay, who in the audience hasn't okay. thought about this for hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I guess it depends on how how changelings regenerate. If that makes sense, if they can grow skin back like we can. Yeah. Or like we donate okay. blood and then we they get more. They grow glue, goo back. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. So like a like a lizard that grows its tail back, if they lose a part of themselves yep. when they're napping in a bucket, they go back to their regular size. Well, didn't well, Otto start as a little blob and then, yeah. Didn't they yeah. at one but, point talk about him getting yeah, I was larger? The, that Dr. I don't Mora think we've episode come to that out. episode yet, but yeah. yeah. But he doesn't have to eat. So I'm like, where does he get the extra mass? Like, where yeah. does it come from? Yeah. Exactly. He just takes it out yeah. of the air. I had cannon and would have to do something with the light hitting him. Maybe he drinks and, water. Maybe. maybe. And, and is that little piece of blood when they took it out, is that able to change into something? That that little thing? No, Can it that refers to a gelatinous steak. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's why they could tell if you're a changeling or not. It's probably it would be like, cool, I'm going to want that back. Yeah, it would be cool <laughs> if it could change yeah, something. Right? Because then it could turn into like a little tiny thing in the vial and be like, let me out. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> it's a little loader. I want to go back to my body. <laughs> Put me back. Put me back. Okay, so here's a big question here, guys. Here's a fun one. Now, starting now, Cisco is no longer a commander. Which opens up the question now that Cisco is not a commander, who is your all time favorite Star Trek character that holds the rank of commander besides Cisco? Holds or held? Oh, that's a, I know there's a lot of meaty choices there. Uh, Rex already knows, so we're going to start with Rex. Always go with me. It'll always be Commander Spock. It'll always be Commander Spock. Easy answer? Easy answer. By the way, uh, you're wearing an awesome new shirt from Abyssinian Kiosk, which is Sirach's sister's uh, shop. Check this out. Look at that. Beautiful color. Nine stripes. Mm -hmm. Excellent design. Yeah, that's, that's the new design. Really, really Beautiful. Good design. And uh, we'll include that in the description box below. It's abyssiniankiosk.com, and you can see all kinds of cool stuff there. Easy answer, Spock was, uh, Rex? Yep, easy answer. What about you, Homer? Do you have an easy answer or is it a toughie? Well, I feel as though I can't take Spock, even though that is a good answer. So I am going to go with Commander Jack Ransom. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I'm um, going to keep my shirt on too. <laughs> 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 Anne Marie, did you At go? Ooh, I, I can tell no one, no one is disappointed. <laughs> did she say? Did she <laughs> said, yeah, she got excited about the thought of him keeping his shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stig, <laughs> Lieutenant J. Oh, I love that one. Is that from Very Mission, nice. from Mission Log store? Yeah, it's related to exactly oh, Mission yeah. Log. Uh, that's Lieutenant J. That. Tracy Coco. Yeah, <laughs> she was great in the virtual Trekcon. That was an awesome makeup demo. Oh my gosh. Brilliant. All right. Well, speaking of shirts, boy, everybody's got some uh some shirts to show off. Melissa Everyone's Longo. Everyone's wearing a shirt. Uh check out Melissa's shirt. This is a brand new one inspired by a virtual <laughs> Trek Con 2, the Cat Pack. And uh that is at no. walkingartmadebymelissa.com. Your shop is a, is it available now or soon? It's available now. <laughs> Now. <laughs> nice it's available right meow all right oh. so oh, oh nice nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> gotta write that down <laughs> Sirach did that start out like he was gonna say he's like oh nice <laughs> so melissa what do you think favorite commander i'm gonna go with the first one that popped into my head uh, and that was Commander Worf. <laughs> I really like it when he says, death to the opposition. Yes. He, <laughs> he does become a commander uh, at the very end, right, guys? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, okay. I thought during season four, no? I think so. Because he was the lieutenant commander. I think it's yeah. pretty soon after he is. Well, okay. And you also have lieutenant commanders who are referred to as commanders. But that doesn't, like data. nope. Only them. Okay, so you're looking. You want three pips. Oh my god! You they know how hold the rank. They actually have to three, hold four the rank. pips. When he got promoted to first officer under right. My answer is still good. Right. So I mean, that includes uh, Beverly Crusher. She's got three pips. That includes Deanna Troy. She has three pips. There are a lot of okay. secret triple pippers. Thanks for those suggestions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think TJ needs any help. After you dominated the techno babble game, so I Sandra. think TJ Changeling <laughs> needs help. Why? Well, oh, no, I, I, I have all the records of Starfleet in my in my queue. <laughs> <laughs> Your answer should be amazing, unless you're trying to convince us that you're TJ. Well, in which case, your answer should be amazing. Well, first, <laughs> I want to know if Melissa had any more to add to her answer as she took a big swig of her beverage. And it's bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, uh, uh, so was Worf a commander? Because yeah. I don't know. Okay, so that's my answer. Easy answer, it sounds like. Likely okay. to season four reviews. Okay. Well, uh, Homer tells us it's Changeling TJ's turn next. <laughs> well... Commander Charles Tucker the Third. Ah, you took mine. <laughs> we knew that was going to be yours, Mo. We knew that was you, Mo. Uh, oh, my answer. Because uh, <laughs> I think we could bond over a good uh, fried catfish. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. His favorite meal. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Sue V. Gruner, now that Changeling TJ stole people's identity as a Changeling and stole your answer. Give you. Chef more work to do. I don't want to talk about trip because I'll get upset. I know what's going to happen. You guys made me watch it, and I'm watching <laughs> it. And I'm thinking, no, I can't handle oh, no. it. Can't oh, wait, handle Sue, aren't you only in season two? No, I'm season. I emailed them today where I am. Episode uh, season three, seven, uh, episode seven. Still, yeah, they're That's still good dealing with uh, okay, you're the good stuff. Last week was oh, she just got uh, was on that planet with that guy who wanted her to stay. Oh, that's the last yeah, one. Oh, that's uh, the beast oh, episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible episode. He made her pizza. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also like a creepy negligee. Oh, that episode. <laughs> and a and graveyard the of old friends. That was the previous <laughs> companion. Yeah, it was kind of like oh that. Still, I really like it. And I, I love Trip. 
he cannot die. No, nope, I'm. No. Nope. Is he is he your favorite uh, character on Enterprise? Uh, yeah, between him, he, he I like to Paul too. I have this this thing now where I want I want a uniform. I don't want to hurt uniforms. Apparently, you cannot get them. Hmm. I want one. Anybody know where she could get a to Paul uniform? I've seen people wearing it, like cosplay people. Yeah, cheap. There's cheap ones out there. Mm. But yeah, I mean, if anybody knows, that would be great. I found somebody that custom makes the Deep Space Mine suits, so I got that in the works. But I really want one of those. I hate to call it a cat suit, but uh, that's kind of what it is. What it is. <laughs> yeah, but, um, cat pack. The cat pack suit. <laughs> cat pack. Yeah. yeah, I like the purple one. She even had purple boots. Uh, who's the actor that played Trip Tucker? Connor Trinier. Connor. Oh, that's Connor? Yeah. 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 Uh. We'd love to have Connor on our show to say hello. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Um, I saw, I think I saw him in a a movie with uh, Tom Cruise. Wasn't he in a movie with Tom Cruise? Hmm. American Made? Was it American Made? Uh, I'm too busy watching all this. I just watched him in Stargate. Take up a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. No, he's in, a, he's in a movie. Was that the one where he was president? Where he played George Bush, right? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird. That's totally him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, who's your favorite oh. commander? Obviously, it's Riker. I love him. <laughs> Obviously. Knew that, um. was <laughs> Knew that was coming. <laughs> because when he becomes captain in certain instances, because he's commander, it's always a really fun episode. Hmm. I don't think Ryan's accepting that answer. <laughs> That is a you, very you acceptable answer. Yeah, all right. No, no right. I didn't think anything, which is also easy to believe. There was nothing going on in here. I was just okay. <laughs> Sounds about right. right. <laughs> no, no, I don't thought. doubt you. Well, I was also reading Homer's message about bespoke to Paul um, uniforms, and I just love that Star Trek uniforms are described as bespoke, as if they're coming from Savile Row. Amazing. <laughs> bespoke. Yeah. Yeah, I use that word. Yeah, for British aristocracy and Trekkies. And for Sue. Mm -hmm. Yes, who is also a Trekkie. <laughs> Which leads us to John Tuferella. Favorite, uh, favorite commander? <laughs> Not uh, the I'm, gonna stick with, uh, I'm sticking with Trip. Or Chakotay. No one left, no love here. Oh, you never know. There are a couple people yeah. left. That's so probably Spock's choice. Why trip, John? Um, his whole attitude, his personality is just fantastic. Mm. Um, I I know I can sit down and you know drink a beer or twelve <laughs> if age to last. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Plus, Connor's a pretty badass guy in real life, so. So you get along with Connor or Trip, either way. Yes. That's fair. Oh, by the way, I am going to get up on the karaoke stage once uh, STLV happens again. He missed cool. last time. Cool badge, by the way. There it is. <laughs> All right. Um, Dr. I want to Muhammad emphasize Moore. that. Uh, oh, please. John is not the changeling. <laughs> no, no, not wait. Which of you speak? Uh, Dr. Muhammad Noor, who's your favorite commander? So, my default was going to be Trip Tucker just because I always feel like Enterprise doesn't get enough love. But since that got picked a couple of times, I'll, I'll go with I'll go with Saru. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Nice. Doug, jo Great. Doug Jones is awesome, and Saru's a really cool character. And Boys. I really liked him in. in in the start of Discovery season three, I won't say any more so I don't, <laughs> in case people haven't watched it yet. I did not make the connection 
between uh, the shape of water yeah. and him. Oh, really? I, I didn't. Now I know, but <laughs> it's pretty cool. You get the, the yeah. Silver Surfer there, too, from yeah. uh, that horrific Fantastic Four movie. Hey, Ryan, yeah, you're you, waiting. You, <laughs> I, never, I never saw it. <laughs> you never saw The Shape of Water? No, I never saw the Silver Surfer movie. Oh, you mean oh. me either. <laughs> I don't know what Silver the Surfer? Movie is. The second Fantastic Four movie that uh, no. they did before mm -hmm. they changed the cast completely and uh the one with jessica elba was two storm before um johnny storm became captain america and it was after chickless michael chickless who was oh, in the now shield I'm now i'm interested oh, <laughs> he was the ever loving thing Tell yeah. us, Homer. Please tell us it's more. It's clobbering <laughs> time. Homer, Homer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just had to mention it. It had been, it'd been way too long. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Sirach, now is your opportunity to either name your favorite commander or to pick a winner. Wait, did you say one, Brian? Nah. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Mine is uh, Kelly Rowland. Kelly on, Roland? Nobody? She'll be your commander. Nobody? The, TJ, please. The singer? Save me. Destiny yeah, Child. No. Destiny oh, Child. yeah, that's right. And change the one that the Rock didn't ask out. No, that, that's, that's, <laughs> hey, I'll Henry, be that your was a secret. Commander. <laughs> oh, my God. No? I love that. I love that story. <laughs> Nobody. Brian will Save beep me. that out. Man. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so... No, how about, uh, okay, <laughs> Commander Cal Hutchinson. Nice. <laughs> okay. Call me Hutch. <laughs> Call me Hutch. That's from a Next Generation episode. Call me Hutch. Wait, isn't it uh, Cal Hudson? No, Cal is Hudson it? It was a guy in Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Uh, and he okay. was also a commander, right. actually. Or Wait, was he? Yes, I know. But didn't you just he was say a commander. Cal Hutchinson? No, I didn't know. What Cal did Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Oh, they're both first name Cal. Who's so. Cal Hutchinson? Um, call me Hutch. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was a guy in Starship Mine, maybe seventh season, fifth, sixth, or seventh season of Next Generation. Okay. One of the best characters Ryan ever. Just doppelganger. Real quick, Data's <laughs> Data's trying to learn how to <laughs> do like small talk at this reception and nobody wants to go to this reception because at the star base because the, the guy there is cal hutchinson and he's like the king of small talk in a bad way and <laughs> so they're like look data if you want to learn how to do small talk just watch this guy and so he's watching cal hutchinson talking to someone and he's emulating him he's going like hey you know he's like practicing these moves and <laughs> and then they get to, it's it's a beautiful hilarious moment but the best part is when before they have the reception when uh they picard says oh we'll be meeting at calvin hutchinson whatever you know and then they're like all kind of go like oh shit this guy i can't stand yeah, this guy so like Wor world Worf says oh captain permission to whatever and he says i have to go do something else and and picard goes permission granted I wish I could excuse myself or what, you know, what is he, what does he say? Something like that. I wish I could excuse myself as well. And then Jordy sees that Worf got excused. So he's like, uh, captain permission to, he's like, I cannot excuse my entire senior staff. Jordy. You got to watch his starship mind. Hilarious <laughs> episode. Anyway, uh, that Command, actually made me, that right. made me think of, uh, the cow that was in this new discovery episode. Th there was a cow character as well. Oh my God! I'm oh, you're right. Oh uh, yeah, K A L Cal. You're right. So, like, they've really recycled that Cal name a few times. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Somebody likes it. Um, my my, I, I'm not going to pick a winner because it's too difficult for me to do that. <laughs> I can just say that I really like Commander Riker as well, Mr. Jonathan Frakes. Mm. Frakes. Like I won. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is that your pick? Is that your pick ever? 
<laughs> Were we allowed to pick Commander Cisco? He was exempt. No, no, Ryan exempted him and wouldn't let us. I forgot. I do have a, a couple of bonus <laughs> answers, though. Yes. All right, let's hear them. All right, the first bonus is Commander Leonard McCoy, just for the <gasps> sake of Anne Marie. <laughs> I'm getting the stink face. Yeah. And uh, second is Commander Kira Norris. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Does yeah. she become a commander at some point? Yeah, in the end. Yes. Yeah, uh, oh, in season good. seven, no spoilers. I've never seen her in the. It's that when movie. she's like. I think, yeah, yeah, I think it's when they put her in the Starfleet one. uniform. Yeah, she's definitely she in that uniform on Cardassia. She becomes point. Colonel, though, doesn't she? Wait. Yeah. She does well, become Colonel also, she, but she, okay. the, uh, as well. they commissioned okay. her as a commander for a specific purpose. Oh, then she would be my pick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked her as commander Did, a lot. did you change it? You changed your pick? Well, if she was a commander, then I'm always team Kira. <laughs> oh, okay. That was Melissa. Yeah. Bro, commander Shelby. That's a good one. I've thought about Commander Shelby oh, also. Riker, right in his place. Right. A few times. You're in my way. Mm. <laughs> I'm a little inappropriately so. Here. <laughs> You're mad she at Shelby. An, she was just an old man's <laughs> fantasy. Right. <laughs> like That's what he says. Star Trek. Yeah. Just an old man's fantasies. Yeah. Oh, and I also have to say that I love my bracelet that I got from Melissa's shop, Walking Art Made by Melissa, that I can't stop wearing everywhere. And I get so many compliments when I go for a coffee in it. Nice. <laughs> and it says Deep Space Nine in binary code, and I love it. Well, on that note, uh, we do have to close this out. Uh, we'll have that website in the uh, description box below, Walking Art Made by Melissa, as well as Abyssinian Kiosk. Uh, also, Mission Log was mentioned, right? With the Tracy Coco uh, yeah. Lieutenant J shirt. There it is. <laughs> and we love them. Nice. Oh, Harry was just on the show. At I love that. I love Very that. Very cool. So, uh, uh, well, I have a couple of honorary commanders to name out. Nice. Uh, Commander John Tuparella, Commander Homer Frizzell, mm -hmm. Commander Rex A. Wood. <laughs> Those are some of my favorite commanders, too. Very good. Mm hmm. Yeah, we got had a lot of options. We also have Commander Burnham uh, is uh, an oh, option. Right. Mm -hmm. And Burnham? now Commander uh, Giorgio. Yeah. Apparently Not she was called a commander. Not Giorgio. <laughs> Not Giorgio. <laughs> no, no, she's no. a renegade. She's too renegade to be <laughs> part of the team. She's not, a, she's not a team player. Cool outfit, though. Cool outfit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, guys. Well, we better run. Uh, but thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, we do want to give special thanks out to Carmen Shamwell, PJ Thomas, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, Bill Victor Arukin, Yvette oh, Blackman, okay. uh, Dennis Koch, Homer Frizzell, Eve England out in Wales, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, Titus Muller, Tim Baum, Dr. Mohammed Noor, Paging Dr. Susan Fee Gruner, and Rex A. Wood. Thank you all very much. Melissa Longo, thank you so much for joining us and for bringing the uh, greenhouse with, uh, with you. Love it. Nice. <laughs> it was a beautiful green tree, and I was like, yes, I love you. <laughs> so. Great. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you all very much. Always remember the seventh rule.